I just wanted to know how how does Mark go from wanting to play basketball? Yes. Originally, well, this is deep background. To bodybuilding. Yep. To wrestling. Yep. To acting, and and not in wrestling. You know, you got your wrestlers, but you were you were former WWE wrestler. Yep. The Outback Silverback, yes, right? Yes, correct. Takes a bit to get there, man. Yeah. No, I mean, I, well, I, it was it was obviously basketball was my passion growing up. Um, so I just I just took to that for whatever reason. Obviously, Dad's heavily involved in footy, so everyone expects you to go that way. Always loved watching footy and didn't really enjoy playing it. The field's too big. It's too much of a team game. You know, it, it, the, you had to run too far to get the ball again. I'd love was, that conversation around the dining table. Yeah, well, man. Oh, no, he knows how I feel, <laughs> you know, but it's great, great. I love watching it, but yeah. I, I would never enjoyed playing it to that level. Um, basketball really took me when I was a kid and it was sort of, you know, in the times of Jordan and when it was bigger than big. Mm -hmm. So everyone played, you know, then. Um, so that took me as a kid and I was really loving that, but I always loved wrestling from when I was tiny. You know, I'll still never forget the day that dad told me it was a work, as we say in the business, which means it may not be, you know, entirely not scripted. We don't say the F word, which is the fake word. Oh, some okay, people yeah. say that, but we don't say that word. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's blasphemous. Do you remember when that journalist did say it to that wrestler? Yeah. And he fucking slapped that's this what guy. Happens. That's what he, happens. He flew across gotta, the room. He goes, is that right, fake? Is that's that fake? You got to protect the business. Right? <laughs> yeah. Um, so... I still remember at the time we went down to uh, some video store, I think it was Video Link or something like that. I rented a whole bunch of these VHSs, which I always did, the wrestling ones. And we got home, we're sitting in the car in front. My dad said, you know what's not real, right? I was like, what? I was like four years old. So this was really, uh, you know, it's yeah. a brutal conversation. It was like Santa Claus, it was, not it being was real. was jarring <laughs> at the time. But I still remember, I remember the weather, it was night time. I remember looking at the train in front of me, it was that sense memory for, for like something for acting, right? So I said, I've got it, I'm there. Right? I know exactly what was happening. <laughs> the spirit was right, taken out of right, it. Right, right. So, um, so I always loved it, even from that age. Then I probably had a lull when I was in love with basketball for a while. And then obviously when The Rock came back, when Stone Cold came back, when I was about 15 years old. Mm. And I tuned in one day, I saw The Rock, and I was like, who is this guy? And it was just sort of at the start of his run. So he's just becoming a heel, just becoming a bad guy. I was like, this guy's so cool. Uh, and I didn't know why. There was just something about him. When you talked about something about people, there was something about that. Yeah. Dude, right? So I was like, oh, I want to watch this again. And that's when it took off again with Stone Cold and The Rock and everything like that. So I was on, on lucky enough to be around in the Attitude Era when I was a teenager. Yeah, man. And it sort of took over my life. And that's why I picked up weights. Because I, want, I wanted to look like those dudes. Right. And, and even when I was a kid, like, I wanted, you know, I was always watching Warrior and Hogan and, you know, Marching Man and all the guys. See, that, those those were the guys that were in my era. Right, yeah. And they, they were the Rock came just after, after right. that. Right. It was after that. Yeah. But I remember seeing Hogan, uh, Andre the Giant, yeah. and, you know, all those guys yeah. coming through. And it, my dad as well was a massive fan. Yeah. Because you got to be at a certain level of athleticism. Oh, for sure. And tough just to be in that sport. Mm. That's brilliant. You know, um, and then you see movies like The Wrestler mm -hmm. from Mickey Rock. And I remember telling you, because yep. I, I had an interest. I was like, Mark, is it really, is it like that? It's, like the raw side of right, it, you know, right. without the cameras and stuff like that. The guys that are working their, their roots just to get up in front of a couple of hundred people. Right. It's pretty bloody raw. It pretty, is. You know. It is, and that's a very accurate depiction of what the world of indie wrestling is. Um, and as I said to you at the time, my trainer, Afa Anawahi, who's also the Rock's uncle, um, Afa the Wild Simone, WWE Hall of Famer, um, he actually trained Mickey Rock for that movie right. and put together all the matches. Um, so so it, that, it's got yeah. that breed. That oh, it was, it was 100%. Pedigree of yeah, it wrestling. Was, and Mickey played it so well because Mickey looks the way Mickey looks. Yeah. And there's some, you know, sadness to Mickey all the time, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, he's a beat up boxer, you know what yeah. I'm saying? So he's got that and he understands it. Yeah. And just like the guy that's still trying to hang on to what was and knows, you know, the best is behind him. Yeah. And there's so many people on the circuit over there. And it makes wrestling wrestling. Yeah. But there's also a sadness to it, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. As a performer. And, and and there is a, yeah, there's like a, a darkness there. 